what's up everybody happy wednesday hope all you're having a great day so far getting into this episode of gh um i enjoyed this episode it was good it was good um i'm gonna need for nina to stop trying to throw this little pity party for herself like she's sitting there telling jackson phyllis oh i can't go back to poor charles i can't do this x y z um listen face the music that's all I can say about Nina. Face the music. Go back to Port Charles. Face everybody. Apologize. Do what you have to do. Even though none of them will accept your apology, that's fine. Apologize. Just face the music. Running away is not going to solve nothing for you. You have made a life for yourself in Port Charles. Your grandson is there. Even though Carly and Michael may not let you see him, technically she still has rights. She can go to court, whatever, and get some type of visitation with the boy or whatever. I don't like what Nina has done to Sonny, like keeping him in the dark all these months about who he really was. I don't like that because I think it was trifling to her. You know what I mean? It was just insane. She was delusional. But at the end of the day, face the music. Running away, it does nothing for you. You know what I mean? Because at some point, they, I mean, even if she runs away, they're still going to hate you. You know what I'm saying? Once Carly and everybody find out that you kept this a secret, they're going to hate you. Knowing Carly, she might hunt you down wherever you are and try to confront you. I'm just saying. But just go there and face, you know, face your demons. <laughs> go ahead and be the town pariah. You know what I mean? Most people have before, so you might as well go ahead and get get your just desserts and just own it. You know what I mean? Um, Phyllis, I, I really hope they keep Phyllis around. She is such a strong character. Strong. I love Phyllis. Because let me tell you something, that woman has been through the ringer. You know what I'm saying? Like the ringer. She just recently lost her husband. Now her business that her and her husband built together, that they cherish, that they love, has literally burned to the ground. And that's what she was telling Nina. She said, listen, I just wanted to let you know the Tano was gone. I felt so bad for that woman. I really did. It's like, what? Mm, I feel so bad. And you know... I understand Phyllis is a proud woman. She would probably never take money from Nina. You know what I'm saying? Like, she probably never would. But in my opinion, if I was Phyllis and Nina talking about some, you know, I don't know how to fix this. I would have been like, sweetheart, I know one way you could fix this. Get your checkbook. Write as many zeros as I need you to write. <laughs> That's how we could fix this. Because this woman literally has nothing. You know what I'm saying? She lost everything. And I think the least Nina could do is, like, write her check, even if she refuses to take it. You still give it to her, you know, help her out. You know what I mean? Even though she would never ask, you know, that's just how Phyllis is. Like I said, she's a strong character. But I do hope that she comes to poor Charles and, you know, Sonny hooks her up and help her. And, you know what I mean? And we could see her be around. You know, maybe she could be sort of like a, another friend to Sonny, somebody he can go to for advice and stuff like that. I really think she's such a strong character. She's a great one to have around. And I think that they shouldn't, you know, give up on that. They shouldn't lose her. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, listen, Chase was mature. I love the way Chase handled that situation with Michael and Willow, because as soon as Michael and Willow walked in, you know, they were ready to just skedaddle and leave the room and, you know, leave the house and go back to the gatehouse and stuff. And Chase said, no, this is your home. You shouldn't have to cut and run because I'm here. You know what I mean? And I respect that. He handled it so maturely. And even Brooklyn said it. She was like, you know, that's nothing with any of her family members. Her family members, the qu the quartermains, they would have never handled that situation the way he did. Oh, it would have been some screaming, some shouting, some slapping, some name calling. It would have been all of that and more. So I definitely appreciate the maturity of uh, Chase. I definitely do. He handled it like a grown man, you know, and he handled it not only like a grown man, but he handled it honestly. Like he simply told them, listen. I'm good. We're good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not holding no grudge against y'all. We're good. He said, we ain't got to walk around on eggshells around each other no more. And Willow's like, really? You sure? He was like, yeah, I'm sure. I'm over it. You know what I'm saying? But he he kept it honest. He was like, listen, just because I say that we're good does not mean we can go back. Because Michael picked up on that when Chase was like, oh, you guys both meant something to me at one point. He was talking in the past tense. And Michael noticed that. And Michael was like, but you, you're talking in past tense. He was like, yeah. And he kept it honest. He was like, because just because we're cool now, like I'm over this stuff, 
does not mean we can go back to being how we were. And I love how BLQ was trying to break the tension and stuff and was like, listen, one day we're going to be like Three's Company. We're going to laugh about this. <laughs> I love BLQ because she was there as an icebreaker. I love it. But I do agree with BLQ. I think one day they will get back to where they once were. I think they will. And you could tell when Michael got the text from Carly to go to the house and stuff and he kissed um, Willow. You could tell Michael was a little uncomfortable kissing Willow in front of Chase. He was a little uncomfortable with it, but um, I'm glad Chase and Willow had that conversation private. You know, that private conversation where they could um, talk and get everything out in the open and um, wish each other well, basically. You know what I mean? And they both admitted, like, they didn't regret marrying each other. They didn't regret loving each other at one point. You know what I mean? And I agree. There should be no regrets. You definitely shouldn't because let me tell you something. Everything that you go through in life is a lesson. It's something that it's something for you to learn from. You know what I mean? And I think they both got something out of what happened with their situation. I think they both did. And I'm glad that they handled it so maturely and they both wished each other well and moved on. I say good because usually you just see a bunch of revenge and and even Chase felt ashamed with the way that he handled things because that's not the type of man he, you know, was raised to be, and that's not the type of man he wants to be. So I love that. I really do. Um, I'm loving the blossoming relationship between Chase and BLQ. Like, he was like, listen, you want to go out for a beer? BLQ was like, listen, I don't do beers. <laughs> he was looking at her like, or whatever other libation you want to do. I said, there you go. Go out, um, BLQ, and go get yourself some wine with him or something. I'm loving them together. I really am. The chemistry between them, I love it. You know what I mean? I'm glad Chase is moving on. Onward and upward. I'm happy about it. Thank God. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. Listen. Somebody need to smack the piss out of Esme. <laughs> I'm getting tired of this little girl. Like, she is just so uncouth. I'm so sick of her. Like, the way she was just talking to Jocelyn was just so uncalled for. Talking about, oh, Jocelyn, so how does it feel to have a stepfather? Like, asking her all these stupid questions. Talking about, does it, is it weird? Is it uncomfortable? Is Like, Jocelyn, I love the way she handled it. She was like, no, because she tried to call Jason a hitman and stuff like that. Well, an enforcer. She was like, no, he's not an enforcer. He used to be. She said, oh, he's like the big gun now. Like, she was just, ugh. I wanted Trina and Jocelyn to just jump her. I said, just whoop her one good time. Um, Jocelyn handled it correctly, though. She was like, listen, when people piss me off, because she tried to throw shade at Jocelyn about the bodyguard situation. Oh, it's like being in a bubble or something, you know, like a fishbowl or something. And Jocelyn was like, no, not really. She was like, because when somebody pissed me off and I go home and let somebody know, that person just disappears. Cameron was looking at her like, huh? <laughs> he said, Jocelyn, that ain't never happened. She said, um, it's the first time for everything. I love how she handled that. I love it. Even though Esme tried to look like she wasn't phased, I said, Esme, you might think you crazy, but you ain't that crazy. Like, you know her family, obviously. You did your homework. And you know what her family business is. You know what they dabble in. So why would you even try to test her? Like, you can't come up missing. Like, some old man ain't gonna find you when he fishing. Like, stop playing. Like, stop playing, because you will find yourself face down in the Hoochatani River. Stop playing with that girl. Like, don't even don't even go there. You're doing too much. Um. So she tried to have a little one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversation after Jocelyn left. Esme tried to have a little one-on-one -on -one with uh, Trina. Talking about, oh, you and Jocelyn are like a team. Kind of like me and Spencer. After she said that and she left, Trina was putting all the pieces together with her past conversations with, with Esme and um and uh, Spencer. And she realized that both of them are the stalker, that they're working together against Ava. I said, it's about time somebody figured this out. I said, thank you, Trina. Um, Hopefully she goes to Ava with her suspicions and they go to Nicholas and stuff and they all figure this mess out because Esme, she need to get a beat down. She needs to get touched. I'm about tired of her thinking that she invincible. Like you, you, you need to get hurt. <laughs> like seriously, somebody need to lay hands on you. Um, so anyway, I love the scenes with Christina and Ava. I'm so glad they finally decided to bring Christina back. 
I didn't understand why Ava was trying to sell Charlie's. I'm like, why not just turn control over to Christina? Like, let her just run the place while you're gone. But I'm so ready for Ava to stop letting this stalker situation control her. You know what I'm saying? Like, take control. You know what I'm saying? Handle your business. Like, I am so sick and tired of this. Like, she needs to handle this. Because the Ava I remember, she would have she would have never hid. She would have never ran. She would have handled her business. And that's what I'm waiting for her to do. Handle your business. Um, but even Christina noticed that Ava didn't want to sign those divorce papers. Because she got the final divorce papers. And all she had to do was read them, sign them, and send them into the courthouse. And her and Nicholas would be divorced. I am so glad Ava decided not to. Because she was like, oh, this could wait till tomorrow. She kept stalling because she could have easily signed them, sent them to the to the courthouse that same night because she had a little time before they closed. She had time to sign them and bring them, but she kept um, BSing around. I said, because she don't want to really sign them. That's why she pussyfooting around, and I'm so glad she didn't sign them. I said, you know what, Ava, tear them papers up. Tear them up because there's no way in the world that this stalker is going to want to go up against Avery. They're not going to do nothing to Avery. Being the daughter of Sonny Corinthos, there's no way in the world nobody going to touch that girl. They not stupid. Well, you got some that are that dumb, but they'll find out quick. Don't do that. But I'm ready for Ava to fight back because that's the Ava I know. You know what I mean? She puts up a fight, and that's what I love about her. Um. So anyway, moving on from that, I am so happy that Sonny, you know, reunited with the family. Listen, Carly took them new rings off her finger so fast. She was like, oh, my God, my old rings, my rings, my wedding rings. She took off the rings that Jason just gave her. She took them off real quick. She said, Loop. I was like, damn, you did that a little too fast, didn't you? Um, But I'm so glad Sonny reunited with his family and him and Dante had that little quiet time together where Dante could, you know, tell him everything that he wanted to tell him. You know, he called him dad, say he loved him and. You know, and he admitted, he was like, you know, we're probably going to be on the opposite sides where the law is concerned. And, you know, Dante was honest about that. You know, he was like, you know, I'm glad you're my dad. Even though I'm a cop, you know, you do what you do. I'm still going to do my job. But he was like, you know, personally, I love you. You know what I mean? Um, So I'm glad they got that understanding. Dante was getting on my nerves when he first got there because we all know he was going to it wasn't going to take long for Dante to question Jason about the Bushima and Novak bombing or whatever i was like dante if you know that you're not going to get any significant answers out of jason why do you keep wasting your time sir <laughs> i was like i don't know why you came there mind you dante pretty much knows what happened he was like so i'm guessing buchema and novak tried to put a hit out on you and carly you found out about it had the bomb switch they blew up am i right i was like yeah you pretty much got it right so what you asking all these useless ass questions for you know Jason not going to tell you nothing that could get him locked up, fool. Um, and Jason kept trying to tell him. He was like, listen, I got something important to tell you. Dante just kept talking. I'm like, Dante, put the shut to the up. Mute yourself so he can tell you that your daddy alive. But I love those scenes, though. I really do. And then, you know, Michael and Jocelyn showed up and Christina showed up. Christina was the most emotional. Like, she was so emotional when she saw Sunday. Sonny had to try to calm her down. He was like, calm down. It's good. I'm here. I'm back. I said, right. Um, I loved it, though. I loved the whole reunion. Them sitting there drinking champagne and toasting. I said, go ahead. Um, I felt bad for Jason, though, because he looked like a sad puppy when he left that house. And the way him and Carly was looking at each other and stuff, I really feel like things are going to hit the fan because as much as Carly's happy to have Sonny back and stuff like that, her and Jason got real feelings for each other. They're really in love. So now they got to figure out what they're going to do about that love and about Sonny and stuff like that. So I'm like, y'all got to figure it out. Like, what are we going to do? You know, Carly got to make a choice. Like, you either going to be Mrs. Corinthos or you're going to be Mrs. Morgan. Which one are you going to do? And she need to make that up quick. You know what I mean? Because Sonny expected to come back and slip back into his life. But things have changed in nine months. So they got to fix that and figure it out. But I know it's going to be some good drama. But um, anyway, this was a good episode. Hit the comments. Let me know what y'all thought about it. I will see y'all all later. Have a great day. Peace.